Hello and welcome to Bullhead City Recreation. I'm Recreation Manager Dave Heath and we've got our special regatta show for you this week. With me right now is regatta sponsorship coordinator Jackie Walker. Jackie, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Now, every year we know that the regatta has lots of sponsors and quite honestly we couldn't make this event happen without all those sponsors. So you do a lot of hard work and I know it's pretty much year round and uh, well, now's your chance. Let's, let's hear about who the great sponsors are we have this year. Well, not only are we gonna talk about sponsors, but we're gonna talk about all the great things that we have going on this year with the event that we are able to do because of our sponsors. Um, and, and it's still growing. I mean, I was just telling, I was just saying, you know, we had more come in last night. We're getting calls from businesses all around the world right now trying to be a part of the regatta. It's very exciting. It's gonna be a great year. Um, we've expanded um, some of our contests and our activities. We are now, um, Really excited about the Thursday night welcome party that's going to be at the Golden Nugget. So the Golden Nugget is on this year as a sponsor. Well, that's a big thing, too. I mean, how many parties? The regatta is not just Saturday float. It's parties associated, too. How many parties do we have? There are year? so many. I mean, I even had to write notes before I came here just so because there's so many new things this year. So Thursday night, we're going to kick it off at the welcome party at the Golden Nugget at 8 o'clock in Gold Diggers. And this year will be the first year we're having the best regatta cocktail contest. And make sure everyone puts that on their calendar because you get to come by and taste all the cocktails and vote for people's choice. And uh, we're still taking um, entries if someone's interested in, in competing. Well, how does somebody enter? The contest, all the contests that we talk about today, all the entry forms are on the website, bullheadregatta.com, and they're all free to enter. So it's free to enter. And first place is $500. So right. what do you have to lose? <laughs> So the thir again, Thursday night at the Gold Diggers, and we're really excited that we have Miss Nevada coming in this year. She's gonna be one of our cocktail judges with Miss Arizona, and then Mayor Brady and our honorable Commodore Jack Hakem. So we're gonna have a, a fun Thursday night at Gold Diggers at the Golden Nugget. And those sponsors are Golden Nugget, Pittman Outdoor, and Murphy Broadcasting, Our Town Magazine, and Wiener Schnitzel. Okay. So everything kicks off Thursday. And then Friday, another new one that we've added is the Most Spirited Business Contest. And again, we're still taking entries for those for local businesses that want to compete and show us their regatta spirit. It's free to enter and first place is $500. I can't say that enough. It's free to enter and you can win $500. So the entry no reason form, not to. Right. The entry form is on the website under contests. Um, and then we'll have the same, our judges, Miss Arizona and Miss Nevada. And uh, Miss Regatta will also be joining us, Stephanie Reynolds from last year, so she'll be guest judging as well. So we will go around Friday and uh, see all the great businesses that are ready to show us their spirits. That's how we're kicking off that Friday. And then Harris hosting the official kickoff party Friday night at 8 o'clock. And they've got some really incredible things planned. Uh, right now in the works is they're securing a floating stage that will be right there in their little bay. Um, and on that stage, they will host the 2016 Miss River Regatta Bikini Spokesmodel Contest. Okay. So we have 10 beautiful ladies coming in to compete for that. And uh, also we might have another guest, special guest judge, I'm not ready to say yet, that will be here to help judge that contest as now well. Now I have to go just so I can see who the judge is. <laughs> totally, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And, um, it's Harris, always a great party, great yes, way to kick off the regatta. Harris does a great job and it's out on their beach, um, great beach party. And then Saturday we will do the big kickoff with the Pirate Cove boat. And by the way, Pirate Cove and Sky Vodka are the sponsors for the Miss Bikini Contest. Um, Saturday we'll kick off with the boat and the cannons to do the big 10th annual Pirates of the Colorado launch for the River Regatta. And then after the regatta is finished, we'll do the after party at Harrah's. And Harrah's theme was they're trying to do a really great mini EDC at their, oh, at wow. their and they're not doing it on the beach. The after party will be in the amphitheater and they're bringing in these great celebrity um, DJs and they've got a huge laser light show, a foam pit, and they brought in this crazy 50 foot, 50 foot, you hear that? 50 foot water slide. Oh, really? It's amazing, and it's all free. All the parties are free, no cover charges. Wow. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I know that um, Harris was telling me that they've got some LED vendors, so they'll be selling like LED hula hoops and okay. all of that, so it'll be quite a spectacle, a lot of good times. Very exciting. Now, and after all that's done, when the regatta's done and everything starts to seem like it's settling, 
We have Sunday, right? Right. And I did skip that. As we're going down river, we'll be judging the most spirited house contest. Um, and again, I want to say first place for that is $750 and it's free to enter. Um, that one you don't have to have an entry form for. You just have to have a banner out in front of your house with your address and balloons. And your house has to be located between uh, Davis Camp, or really Community Park, Community Park and Rotary Park. And we'll go through and judge. And then those people who are in the contest have to be at the awards ceremony. Sunday at 10 a.m. at Harrah's to claim their prizes. Okay. Wow, that's a lot going on. I know, it really is. And it's all on the website. So that's sort of our key. And, and then, of course, our new app will have all of the, new, all the schedules on it as well. Okay, so everything I need to know about the regatta I can find on the app and the website, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Okay, now what about our biggest sponsor this year, the one that we couldn't do it without? Laughlin. Of course, we love Laughlin. Yes, Laughlin is a great partner for us. Um, they do um, a lot of very instrumental things for us as far as, as supporting the event. And um, all of the properties are putting on great um, packages and parties and specials and food and all kinds of wonderful things. So we're very grateful to Laughlin. Okay. Laughlin, Red Bull, and Tri-State Ace are our top three. They're our best. We love yeah. them. Yes. We love them very but much. But we love all of them equally. Yes, that's right. Just in different ways. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, of course, this year we've got the same two registration sites, yes. correct? Yes. Bullhead City uh, Walmart and the Tropicana Laughlin are the two registration sites, and they start Thursday, August 11th. Okay. Wow. Great job, Jackie. That's a lot of stuff we've got going on. Yeah, I can't wait to and get And like out I said, it's still, it it's still growing and all coming together. It's going to be a really great and exciting year. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I know I have to work most of the time, but it's still it's a fun event to be associated with. And uh, I hope everybody out there comes and enjoys the regatta because there's going to be a lot of fun stuff going on. Jackie, thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing this with us. Thank you for having me. And we'll have you back next time. Deal. All right. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Bullhead City Recreation. Welcome back to Bullhead City Recreation. It's the Regatta Special, and with me right now is City Manager Toby Cotter. Toby, Hi, welcome Dave. back to the show. Good to yeah. see you again. Great to be back. And it's another Regatta year. Tenth one. Can ten you believe years? it? Ten years? Where'd those ten years go? <laughs> they flew you look right younger. By. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's exactly <laughs> what happened to me. But yeah, it's our tenth one. We're uh, Pirates of the Colorado again. And um, how many have you been here for? Well, I started here in 2010, so that was about, what, our fourth year or yeah. so. Um, so I've, I've definitely seen the maturity of the regatta go from what I thought was pretty big in 2010, uh, you know, about 10,000 people, but I guess that was kind of small, all things considered now. It's grown even more, yeah. So, I mean, besides just the sheer growth in numbers, what are kind of some of the, the differences you can see in the regatta from 2010 to now? Well, I mean, certainly safety is a big component of that. I mean, the city spends a lot of money. The event spends a lot of money on public safety. I mean, that's just a, a clear indication of, you know, the way the event goes, the fact that there's a safety uh, zone in place so people can float without boats. I mean, that that's the most significant thing about the regatta, I think, that most people forget about. You know, you can float on the river any day. We all agree with that. And I see more and more people floating in Bullhead City than I've ever seen before. So obviously that is, you know, something that continues outside of just the regatta day. But I think more importantly is it's the only day of the year 
where you know that you're on the river with your friends and no boats and the yeah. only boats that are out there are public safety vessels there to protect your life. It's a big difference because, you know, like you say, you're seeing more and more floaters. I'm seeing more and more personal watercrafts and boats out there on the water every weekend right. than I've seen ever before. So yeah, I mean, it's a great respite from that is yeah, kind of nice. It's a great destination for people who are coming here. It's affordable. Uh, so whether it's the regatta or any other weekend of the year, I mean, we always continue to promote Bullhead City as a very affordable vacation place, especially in the summer. It's a, it's a great place to escape, uh, you know, Southern California and come and hang out on the river or the lake. And a lot of people do it. And I think the regatta introduces people to the area and then they keep coming back and you see the numbers, just sheer numbers. I think we've been talking about this year that every weekend seems to be like a holiday weekend. So. <laughs> Um, I'm in expecting the regatta to be, you know, another big event and it'll have a big impact on the community as it always does. And uh, I think the community is always ready for it now, not only in police and fire and public safety, but restaurants are ready, businesses are ready. People appreciate that extra boost of revenue in the heat of the summer. Um, so the community is ready for it. I think we just need to do a better job of training the community for those other events like soccer tournaments and softball tournaments that they're not necessarily ready for. Everybody's ready for the Laughlin River Run. Everybody's ready for the regatta. I mean, those are the easy ones where people are kind of ready for. Um, we seem to kind of miss out every once in a while though on getting the community ready for some of these other events. And that's what your show and other uh, media does. We yeah. just keep reminding people about these big events. And uh, I mean, arguably there's none bigger than this one. Yeah, but, but you're right. I mean, there are more and more events, more soccer tournaments, more softball tournaments, and they're all growing too. Uh, this really seems to be a great destination area for tourists and people that want to come and, and have a great time participating in recreational activities. What do you think uh, we can attribute that to? Well, I mean, affordability is a big piece of that. I mean, rooms, whether you're in Bullhead City or Laughlin, renting a house in Bullhead City, I mean, typically the affordability drives people. So it's not just the fun of it, because you can have fun in a lot of places all over the world. It's just very expensive to go to some of those places. So affordability is a huge driver of what brings people to Bullhead City and Laughlin. Now, when you talk about other special events and activities, it's the weather, it's the beauty, it's all these things that bring people here. But really, Bullhead City and Laughlin have realized that, you know, we need to keep filling hotel rooms, we need to keep driving the economy, and we need to keep having special events. And the regatta is just one example of that, where we get, you know, we keep hitting that niche. And it's a tourism niche that we've had for a long time, but it evolves. At one point in time, it was just gambling, and gambling was enough. And, it, that went along with weather and river and lakes, but now it has to be much more than that because you can gamble anywhere in America. And so that gambling niche is, is worldwide, really, right. certainly across our country. So when we look at how else can we drive people here, that's when we talk about other activities and pickleball and shuffleboard and senior games and uh, things like bike events, uh, anything that can drive people here for a niche that's not just the gambling niche, although that's still a huge part of it, don't get me wrong, and that can continue, but we see lessons from across the country where we want to be sure that our niche is, is multifaceted in that we can continue to steer people not just toward gaming, not just toward hotel stays, but to everything else this community has to offer. And the more, they, more time they spend at our businesses and our retail shops and using the services that are offered in Bullhead City, um, you know, the better our community is. And when people look at the regatta, you think of the typical things, right? Everybody eats, everybody shops. But as we know, the regatta also lends itself toward, hey, I lost my cell phone. I'm going to go to the AT&T store. Or uh, I cracked my screen. I'm going to go to the AT&T store. Batteries and bulbs. Or... Um, I locked my keys in my car, which is a very common occurrence, yeah. unfortunately, for people during the regatta, so we need to call locksmiths. So there's, you know, there's that definite trickle down of other businesses that you don't typically think of. Of course, we spend a lot of money with our local vendors, whether it's buying items, produce, food, um, you know, other hard goods and our, uh, things at the hardware stores that we need. Um, it is a, it's a big event. I mean, it's a multi, you know, it's a million dollar event kind of in and out for the city, um, but multi-million for the community at large. Yeah, no doubt about that. It makes a huge impact. And I think the good thing 
is that, that when people come to our area for this event and other events that they're participating in, they're leaving with a, a good feeling and they're bringing more people back with them. I, I, I really attribute the, the growth, the massive growth that we've had in the regatta, um, more to great word of mouth than anything else. I think people are leaving and they've got a good story to tell. Yeah, and your social media drives a lot of people, but word of mouth is huge. The Laughlin advertising they do, the advertising we do, you know, but, it, but it's everything from A to Z because it wouldn't have made it 10 years if it one, wasn't a product that people enjoyed and two, wasn't a product where people were safe. So, it, I mean, it's everything from A to Z, not just, in my opinion, not just word of mouth or any a bit of advertising, but you wouldn't have gone from 700 to 30,000 people um, if it wasn't fun if it wasn't something people thoroughly enjoyed, if it wasn't something they would keep coming back for and telling their friends about where the word of mouth truly is maybe your best source of advertising, but it, it's, it's more than just, hey, I had a good time at the regatta. I mean, for some people, I remember the guy that was interviewed on TV for a few years ago, he, he, he says, it's, it's better than the Super Bowl. <laughs> So for some people, it is their Super Bowl or their Mardi Gras or their family reunion or their back to school treat, whatever the reason. For some people, they look forward to the regatta year round. And, and for me, I contribute it solely to that safety zone, even though that's not how it started. Mm -hmm. The reason I think it's been able to get to where it's at and how we safely can float 30,000 people down the river is because there are no boats, there are no jet skis. And when you're out on that river, with just your friends and the tranquility of the river, that's something that you can't find here any other day of the year. And you can't really find that experience anywhere in America, really. This is a very unique piece of the Colorado River and having it shut down to all boating traffic and just you being out there with your friends, it's really unique and you can't find that experience anywhere in America. Well, I want to thank you and the city council for the amazing support you've given to the Recreation Division making this happen, uh, and, and as well as the entire city staff and all our volunteers. It takes a lot to put this together and having great support from you and the city council really makes a difference for us and makes us feel enabled like we can go above and beyond and create a wonderful program for folks, so we appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, and we appreciate everything that you and all of your staff does, and, and without our community support, without those volunteers, without the city staff, again, a, they're A to Z, they're, they're in that A to Z component. Because if you take any bits and pieces of that out, if you take the city staff out, if you take the volunteers out, you take the fun out, you take the safety zone out, any of these critical components, the event just doesn't happen, certainly doesn't happen the way it happens today. So um, while I think there, a lot of credit can go around to a lot of people, the reality, it's everyone. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and we're look, looking forward to doing it all over again this year. Yep, it's a community event in the truest sense of the word. And, and uh, we love to show off our community with our community and bring those people into town. Right. Well, Toby, thanks okay. very much for coming thanks, on the Dave. show. It's you great bet. having you as always. Now, don't go away because we'll be right back with Ed Catalfamo, the special events coordinator and the chairperson for the Bullhead City River Regatta. Welcome back to Bullhead City Recreation. I'm Recreation Manager Dave Heath and it's our regatta special. And my final guest on the special today is the man that makes the circus happen, the ringleader himself, 
Ed Catalfamo. Ed, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Dave. Great to have you on. Now, Ed, is, is you've been the uh, chairperson of the regatta ever since its inception. That was uh, one of the main reasons why I hired you, because of your experience that you had with the River Run, and you've mm -hmm. done a great job ever since. So I'll ask you the same question I asked Toby. In 10 years, what's the, what are some of the bigger differences you've noticed in, in making the regatta happen and seeing what happens out there for all the folks? I think the, the biggest advantage we have now that we didn't have eight, nine, ten years ago is we've been through the event. Um, I've done several special events before coming, coming on with the uh, Recreation Division and this event is just so unique that you really have to live through it at least a year before you can really put your finger on it and start um, planning it. It's an event that spans, you know, 12 miles of, of a river, um, controlled by 18 different federal agents, federal and state and local agencies. Uh, it just it just has three different or two different launch parks, a landing park. It's just a lot of logistics, a lot of operations. Um, in year three and four, we started getting into where we started operating through the National Incident, Incident Management System. That really organized us and help us, helped us to, uh, to get things a little bit, you know, a little bit better organized for the participants, for the staff, getting um, our logistics and operations systems nailed down. Um, and then a few years later, with the safety zone coming on board really helped uh, helped us um, but i think the the biggest advantage was when we really started to operate the regatta like it was a business and not like a festival mm -hmm. when we started doing that we really started to put people in place that we needed to be able to make certain decisions that could handle and make those decisions and the consistency that we have people, the leads at Rotary Park, <clears throat> excuse me, the leads at Davis Camp, the leads at Community Park, they've all been the same for years. Um, and once we nailed down the transportation and registration system, which is really the two bookends of the, of the event, I've always called them bookends. Uh, if we can make them smile at the registration process or at the beginning of the event and make them smile at the end when they're getting bus ride home, we've, we've done a great, a great job because the float will take care of itself that's that's the three hours of fun and that's going to be fun so if we're not <clears throat> if we don't have long lines and registration and we don't have long wait lines for a bus ride home and our bus system is working like it's supposed to they have a great time and the last last year was really probably the best year we've ever had um, the other thing was, was catching up to the growth of, of the event it was so popular we were jumping up 170% at one point in, in registration. We'd go from 5,000 to 15,000 in a year, and then 15,000 to 25,000. So if, as a planner, that's a pretty, it was a pretty tough thing to, to be able to manage because you, know, you gotta be financially and fiscally responsible as well. So, you know, you're a, it's, a, it's a constant juggling act right. of, of trying to, to coordinate this big this big beast. Well, and, and I would say one of the other aspects that you guys really have hit well on uh, and kind of made it a success and and hopefully that success will be repeated again this year is trash collection. I know people have shown a little bit of a concern about that, um, but it seems like you've nailed that right along with registration and transportation. So I think that makes folks happy, especially right. the locals. Absolutely. And, and we all live here. We all want our, our Colorado River to remain beautiful and pristine. And we noticed this problem when we went from 10,000 to 25,000 people in that one year. And that's when we started getting this, this trash issue. Some of it was because we didn't have good landing areas, so people were having a tough time landing, so they were just dumping their stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we fixed that. Um, we've also fixed uh, having more trash collection places on the parks, in the parks. We have a garbage truck now that can constantly, you know, pick up garbage and, and dump it at the same, you know, the same time. So we're not constantly just 
once a dumpster's full, then it starts getting a mound of trash, and then it just grows and grows. So um, we, we've learned a lot along along the way. Trash was, was one of the, the problems that came up. We, again, last year, we did a great job. We got onion bags for, for everyone to hook onto their um, to their tubes to put all their trash in. It's like a mesh bag, so the water flows through it, and it keeps the trash. Um, and then we have plenty of, of trash receptacles available at the landing sites for people to, to dump their stuff so it doesn't end up in the river. Now, all that being said, things have gone well. You continue to doing the things that you do well. Again, um, what are some of the bigger changes we're going to see this year with the regatta? Our biggest thing we're getting actually rolling, rolling out the, this week is our, our regatta app, our mobile app. We're noticing people are registering more online um, through their mobile devices and their iPods, I pads and, and their cellular devices. So we created a regatta app and one of the best features of that, of course, and the selling point for me was safety. A lot of years, a lot of regattas, we get a lot of people that get separated from their parties. They're floating down the river and their tube gets unhooked and they end up, you know, the river takes them a totally different way and they get separated. It happens every year. Um, in the parks, we have separated persons, trailers that people can go and try to get a hold of these folks. But what this app will do, as long as you friend us on Facebook, download the app, you'll be able to pin where your friends are throughout the entire e event. Wow. So you'll know if they're still at Community Park or if they landed on a safety stop or uh, they're across the river in Big Bend Park or they're back at their hotel. That's oh, really nice to have. Joe People and, are going to love that. Yeah, Joe and Sally, I guess they're home, so I'll just head that way. So it takes a lot of the, the frantic out of it, the, the fright, because people don't know where their friends are. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, it's a, it's a river, so we, you know, it's, and it's a quickly flowing river. So we ask everyone to please, please, please wear a life jacket at all times. Um, in fact, having a regatta suntan, we call it the regatta suntan with the life jacket. That's a badge of courage, badge of honor. Um, please wear them. If something happens out there, you have that life jacket on, it, it, it'll save your life. Well, the safety is all super important, and I'm glad to see that the app's going to have that, uh, that key uh, feature to it. That's going to be really nice. People are going to love that. And of course, wear your life jackets, stay hydrated, drink something other than beer, yes. and make sure that... Uh, you have something on your feet to protect your feet. But um, back to the app a little bit. What else is going to be on the app? Uh, this app will have everything. Any, If you've gone to EDC or Coachella, or it's actually the same company that developed those apps it, it is doing our app development as well. So we can do push notifications. Say if we have a, a bus breakdown at Harris, we can send out that notification, say, hey, be patient. We got one of the bus buses has a flat tire and is blocking a lane but we're working on resolving that um, so we can we can push all those kind of safety instant safety messages out throughout the day we can uh, push out hey there's not a line at uh, the Colorado Bell buffet hit that place you know because if people we notice people you know well, I'm waiting in line here for this restaurant well try this one we had a lot of great dining places in Bullhead and, and in Laughlin so there's um, just a huge amount of information we're going to be able to put on that app. Um, all of our contests we're doing, the pre-party information. Again, we're on Saturday or Friday night, the kickoff party will be at Harrah's. So we're doing uh, the Miss uh, Regatta contest. We'll have Miss Nevada and Miss Arizona as guest judges, as well as our honorary Commodore, uh, Jack Hakem, will, will also be assisting with the judging. Uh, Thursday, we'll have the welcome party at the Golden Nugget. And Saturday, after the float, we'll do, Harrah's is going to do another post-party um, event. So that looks like they have a lot of good plans down there. And then, of course, Sunday is, is the award. So all the information you, you can ask for will be on that app. Our direct link for, to our website is on that. Uh, we'll have all of the bus lines. There's five uh, bus lines from uh, from the casinos and, and a bus line that handles the entire Arizona side. So 
all the information is on there. It'll be readily available to you. Uh, I also encourage everyone to get on our website, educate themselves. We'll have programs that everyone can that can pick up at registration or in their hotels. Read through it. Read through all the safety information. Uh, we find that the the better educated the participant is, the better experience they have. Right. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Now it's basically a four day event. Now um, Jackie was telling us about all the parties and everything earlier, and you just reemphasized all that. Um, but let's get down to the float and kind of the brass tacks of that. First, people can register at bullheadregatta.com. How much does it cost to register? Uh, right now, it's uh, 30, $30 plus processing fees, so it's right under $35. And then on uh, the week of the event, it goes up to $50. So, so register now so is register what you're saying. now is the best <laughs> bet if you don't want to pay that. And, and we, have to, we have to charge that extra because... Um, those are the more resources we're going to have to have. If we get mm -hmm. 10,000 people coming in at the last minute, those, that's the funds we're going to use to help offset that. Uh, if we have to go get more buses, if we mm -hmm. have to go get more police and fire folks. And so that, that helps cover, cover that cost. And when, when can people float and where can they launch from? Uh, you can launch this year. You can launch from Davis Camp community park on the Arizona side and that starts at 7 a.m. and then you have to be in the water by 1 p.m. On the Nevada side you can launch at the Pioneer same time 7 to 1 if you're a Pioneer guest and Harris also has a beach that they can safely launch uh, folks from and the same same time 7 to 1 but you have to be a Harris guest so if, if you're staying at a different casino you still need to get on the bus and come over to Davis Camp to, to launch. Now getting on the buses, that's all free. We can get free transportation from your hotel, to the parks, to the launch sites, and, and back again. Um, but when do the buses start and when do they stop running? The buses will bring people to the, to the launch sites 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then uh, when you land down at Rotary Park, you have to be in line by 5 p.m. in order to ensure yourself a ride back. So that gives you quite a bit of time to, to, to float, especially if you get there early. The earlier, the better, you'll, you'll find it to be your best experience. We have a lot of folks that like to, to hang out and on different areas along the river and kind of kick back and relax a little bit. Um, but please make sure you're in line by five because that bus system, we can only go so long. So we need to want to make sure everybody gets back in, in time and rest up for that, that Saturday night party too. One other thing that we have that uh, we don't do any longer is tube storage. The reason we don't do tube storage anymore is because um, yet another aspect of the regatta that we've really hit on doing well has been inflation that our utilities division has put together. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Why do people, I mean, how important is it for someone to, uh, I mean, how much, helpful, how much more helpful is it to be able to infl inflate the day of the uh, float? Oh, it's, it's huge. And that was a, another huge advancement in, in the overall operations of, of the regatta over the years. And it happened about three years ago. We had some pretty talented utility workers that came up with this, with this system. And it, the system, uh, air station system, sponsored by ACE, had, it's about a hundred long run. It's run by two compressors and it has a little wings off of, you know, hose wings off of everything that has a nozzle, um, doesn't lose any pressure. Like if you just have a one air compressor, it's eventually going to lose, lose pressure. We can, we can uh, air up to 50 to 60 floats on one run at a time, um, each float less than five minutes. It's really wow. an amazing thing. And when we came up to the, with this system, we found, well, why bring people over and have them store their tubes when they can just come in the morning and they're gone? Yeah. You know, in the earlier days, it was taking 15, 20, 25 minutes to blow up a tube. So that was, that was at that time, a, a, a good thing for our participants. But now they're not having to come over here twice. You know, they don't have to come over here, blow up their tube, wait in line, blow up their tube, store it. And then of course the weather, you never know if we get any winds, those things could fly away on us. So yeah. 
uh, but the air station improvement was, was huge as well and we have uh, I, I think we had 10 rows down at Davis camp last year and with you know 26,000 people we only we ended up not even using two of the rows so we have a lot more capacity for for those if we you know we do get a spike in in, in attendance this year which we we probably probably will because it's our 10th annual so we're you know we're, we're prepared for that um, but those air station and that air station system will will hold nice that's very nice so to just come in the morning with your tube blow it up and hit the river it's it's really a, a an easy process nice very nice well ed before i let you go are there any uh, big key bits of information that you need to let people know before i get you out of here i would just again encourage everyone to drink plenty of water it's a long float um, if you do drink other beverages, make sure you're at least drinking a bottle of water for every other caffeinated or alcoholic beverage. Please drink a bottle of water for both because uh, it's hot. You know, a lot of people aren't used to that heat. Wear your life jacket, sunscreen, wear a nice you know, brimmed hat, and um, water shoes, not um, flip sandals or flip-flops. <laughs> they fly off and they become part of the trash problem and when you hit that beach and that you know after the fifth step and your foot's dry it's now pretty hot on your your poor little feet right. so uh, wear the water shoes and, and you'll you'll be good to go all right well ed great job as always it's great having you on here to talk about this wonderful event and i'm really looking forward to it and i hope everybody else out there is looking forward to it either as a volunteer or as a floater uh, come and check it out, August 13th. And if you want more information about it, go to bullheadregatta.com. And you can always go to the App Store for uh, either Apple or Google and just type in River Regatta and our app will show up. And download that sucker and get it on your phone right now. It's going to be a big help for you this year. Ed, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Dave. Good luck with your regatta. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here at Bullhead City Recreation. And remember, with recreation, the benefits are endless.